Uh, good morning and welcome to the planning hearing officers hearing for August 17th, 2011. My name is Eric Krauss and I will be conducting the hearing as hearing officer. We have three CUP uh, cases today. Relevant exhibits are posted on the panels located directly behind me. Uh, under the provisions of Title 30, Chapter 30.42 of the Glendale Municipal Code, a conditional use permit shall be granted if four required findings are present. And these findings for the, the three cases that are on the agenda today are, all were addressed in the uh, staff reports. Uh, if the evidence presented in the application and the hearing meets the criteria just described in the, in the staff reports, then the planning hearing officer can either approve or impose conditions for approval on the case in question. If the f uh, findings of fact are not evident, then the request will be denied. Uh, notification of this hearing was accomplished by the use of public notices which were mailed to the property owners located within a 500 feet radius of the subject properties and physically posted on the site in question and placed in the local newspaper. Uh, the hearing will proceed as follows. I'll read the description of the application request. Uh, the case planner will make a brief overview of the case and give analysis and make recommendations. And then the applicant will be asked to come forward as stating both name and address and will be asked to present the case within a 15-minute time limit. Uh, others in support or in opposition of the application and interested parties will be asked to come forward to speak, again, clearly stating both name and address within a three-minute time limit. Lastly, the applicant will be given the opportunity to make closing uh, comments if desired in response to testimonies given by preceding speakers within a five-minute time limit. Uh, the hearing will be closed and the cases will be taken under submission. Um, after the hearing, the decision will be prepared in writing and will be in the form of a letter sent to the applicant and to all persons who responded to the public notice either by speaking at this hearing or by submitting written responses and have provided their names and mailing addresses. The date on the decision letter will be, uh, the, the, the date of the decision will be appearing on the letter. Uh, under the appeal provisions of Title 30, Chapter 30.62 of the Glendale Municipal Code, the decision may be appealed to the Planning Commission within 15 days of the date of the decision. Anyone wishing to appeal may obtain forms and brochures on the procedures from Building and Safety Section Permit Services Center located on the same floor in room 101 of this building. Speaker, if anyone wishes to speak, please uh, write your name and address on one of the speaker cards forms you provided on the table outside the front door there. If you could hand those to our Planning Assistant James Combs, that would be great. Uh, I would like to inform everyone that the official proceedings of the hearing are being recorded as part of the public record. I'm going <clears> to, <throat> the first case on today's agenda is uh, located at 4441 San Fernando Road, and this was continued from the August 10th, 2011 hearing. Um, a conditional use permit uh, case number is 2011 013. Uh, the applicant is Arthur Asai, uh, Israelian. The property owner is HBK Properties LLC. Case planner is Gavork Nazarian, and the project description is an application for a conditional use permit to allow the sale and service of beer and wine for on-site consumption of an existing full-service restaurant located at 441 San Fernando Road in the IMU Industrial Commercial Mixed Use Zone, described as portion of Lot 10 Watts subdivision. Uh, may I have a report, please? Yes. Good morning, Mr. Krauss. Thank you. As you mentioned, case number PCUP 2011-013 located at 4441 San Fernando Road. The proposal is to obtain conditional use permit to upgrade uh, and also to allow the sale and service of beer and wine for on-site on consumption at the existing full-service restaurant. There was, an exist there was a previous CUP approved which had expired in, on October 31st of 2010. Subject property is, loc is a 30,492-square-foot corner lot located at the corner of Chevy Chase Drive and San Fernando Road. There are three freestanding buildings on this lot, two of which are used for automotive services, and the subject building is solely used for, for restaurants. There are no major comments by other departments. However, police department did have an input for staff to consider. And according to the police department, the census tract 3024 in which the subject property is located allows for six on-site establishments. However, there are 11 on-site establishments at this tract. And uh, based on the Part 1 crime statistics for this tract, 3024, in 2010 there were 171 crimes, which is 119% above the citywide of 78. 
However, this particular restaurant had only one call last year in 2010. And uh, as I had my uh, conversation with, with the lieutenant from the police department, he indicated that this particular site hasn't been, so to speak, a trouble site. There haven't been many calls in the past five years when you compare it with the average of other restaurants in the area. And uh, this is a... Uh, this is an existing CUP that did expire. However, it's not an increase in the numbers of on-sale establishments. There's an existing. This is an existing on-sale establishment, and they're looking to get a new CUP simply. So, staff supports the project, and there are 15 recommended conditions, some of which have been uh, have been uh, added by the police department. And uh, if you have questions, I can try to answer them. The applicant is also here for questions and also presentation of the findings. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, if I can have the applicant come forward, please. You have 15 minutes to state your uh, findings, please. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, the site sells service and the consumption of alcoholic beverages in existing full-service restaurant is conditionally permitted in industrial commercial mixed-use zone, subject to approval of a conditional use permit and is uh, consistent with the various elements of the general plan. The request is a keeping with the standard of various elements, uh, the standard operational process in the zoning use certificate and shall comply with the conditional conditions of CUP. The establishment is located in industrial commercial use zone uh, where the restaurants are allowed and the zoning designation of the design to promote service and re retail uses for the benefit of the neighborhood. The restaurant use is, with, uh, the restaurant use is within, uh, within structures that is one of the three buildings. Uh, the other two buildings as mentioned uh, give work its uh, automotive services and is not uh, impact any parking or uh, 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 impact on the operation of the other two uh, <coughs> businesses. The subject building has been used as the restaurant for, since 1980, and the existing restaurant is operation, uh, operating from 1998. Also, uh, the associate structure and facilities will not be demanding to the public health or safety, the general welfare of, of the environment. The existing full-service restaurant with the proposed sales service and the consumption of the beer and wine will not drastically impact existing facilities, properties, values of normal development with the surrounding area. The existing uh, commercial building uh, already is uh, is complying with the old zoning. Uh, requirements and uh, uh, and the conditional use permit for the cell service on the site consumption of the beer and wine is a not anticipate the parking uh, parking demand since no additional structure or services should be provided. The existing parking spaces are proposed to remain. Moreover, the site fully developed and area with the requirement utilities such as gas, electric, water, and other requirements in the place. Okay, I, I don't, did you, I don't recall if you stated your name and address before you? Arthur Israelian. Okay. So this is your request to speak. This is the only card we got for this particular project? Okay. I did have a couple of really quick questions. Um, 
Now, the, the staff report and also the police report indicated that you did have one call for service to your restaurant. Was was this kind of was this an alcohol related case, or can you do you remember what that case was for? Actually, it was a uh, like kind of hold up. It's not alcohol. Okay. Yeah, and the uh, owner gave him very good answer. I think after that they won't be able to come again. <laughs> Okay, and um, have you taken a look at all the conditions of approval on the project? Are you okay with the conditions? Uh, some of them, they are uh, trying uh, uh, The main thing, it was uh, the trash bin on a lot, and the owner is negotiating with the property owner to give them some place. There is a, on a, uh, there is a, on the corner of the building, there is a trash space for the old three buildings. Uh -huh. And you're gonna take one of them and take out the, from the parking lot the trash bin. Okay, so you can comply with that condition. Right? Okay. Um, also, in terms of you, you mentioned that you've been there since 1998, that particular restaurant. Have you always had a CUP for alcohol and yeah. beer? Yeah. Okay. From 1998, yes. Uh, if I may quickly jump in, according to the staff report, there the subject property has been operating as a restaurant for a long time, and the existing restaurant was there since. 1998, but the CUP was, I believe, since 2001 for the uh, beer and wine okay. for the subject restaurant. And I will quickly double check my facts. I believe it's 2000, 2001, yeah. You know, in terms of the parking, you, you know, the other three uses are auto-related. It's just like body shop and repair, so it's not a... Automotive. Uh, automotive. It's repair shop. Okay. It's not a body shop. It's... Now, you, do you have are spaces specifically dedicated for the restaurant use only, or are they kind of shared by all three uses? The parking, yes. Yeah, it's just yes. all. Awesome. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Actually, I didn't it's kind of separating the two uh, two buildings from the right side, and the restaurant is completely separate. Okay, so there's kind of a natural separation of the buildings. Okay. Um, I didn't have any other questions. I don't know if the staff wanted to add anything else. Or? Nope. Okay. Um, that doesn't have additional comments. I don't see any other speaker cards, so at this point I'm going to take this case under submission. I'll be making my decision within the coming weeks. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, um, our second case on the agenda is located at 734 and 738 North Glendale Avenue. It's for a condition of use permit, case number PCUP 2011-015. The applicant is Cafe Bahar, care of Amak Group Incorporated. Uh, the property owner is Mayan Levin, and the case planner is Gavork Nazarian. This is for an application for a condition use permit to upgrade an existing condition use permit, PCUP case number 2008-012, from, uh, from sale and service of beer and wine to full service alcohol, on-site sales, service and consumption within the existing service restaurant and newly proposed outdoor patio area at the rear located at 734 738 North Glendale Avenue in the C2 Height District 1 zone. Uh, described as portions of lot 33 and 34, track number 4658. I have the staff report, please. Yes, thank you, Mr. Krause. As you mentioned, the next case for conditional use permit is the number PCUP 2011-015. Proposal is to upgrade the existing CUP 2008-012 for on-site sale and service of, from on-site service of beer and wine to full liquor in the C2 zone and the existing CUP that was granted in 2008 will is set to expire on July 7, 2013. Subject property is a is an 11,290 square foot lot with an existing building that uh, is a the existing restaurant shares a shares the building with a with another tenant to the south which I believe is a uh, office use. The restaurant Square footage of the restaurant is 1,772 square feet, and it, the building was built in 1952. The proposed patio, which is approximately 680 square feet, will not trigger additional parking in terms of zoning code requirements because it's not covered, although it will have additional seatings outside, which will be facing to the east, which are residential buildings across from the alley. The proposal includes the enclosure of that patio area with a, with a fence, iron, iron fence. However, staff did have conversation with the uh, neighborhood services department and the uh, conclusion was that just an iron fence may not be sufficient enough for noise mitigations and noise buffering. So 
staff recommends, one of the recommended conditions is to provide wood fence, solid wood fence with, with planting in front of it, which would eventually require making the uh, patio area a little smaller so that there would be enough space from the outside of the patio to provide plants and shrubs and per perhaps a hedge in front of the proposed, proposed wood fence to, to mitigate the noise going from that area to the, to the residential zone. Staff <clears throat> also recommends closing down the patio at 11 p.m., but it is up to your discretion whether you want to change that hour, of course. According to the police department, the area is 24% above the citywide average of crime rate. However, this particular restaurant is the only restaurant in the area with an on-sale establishment license. And the proposal is not adding additional licenses, it's just upgrading from beer and wine to the full liquor. Staff supports the project with the, with the recommended conditions, as I mentioned, and the particular one would be to, uh, I guess, pay closer attention to is to provide fencing towards the east to buffer the noise from the residential zone and also limit the hours to the patio in general, not just alcohol, but close down the patio after a certain hour, which is recommended 11 p.m., but it is up to your discretion to, to change that if you wish. That wraps up my uh, report, and if you have questions, I'm available. Very great. Thank you. Um, I, I, I have the one card, and I'm not sure if this is from the applicant or not, so we'll get to that in just one minute. Um, if I can have the applicant come forward and uh, explain how the project complies with the required findings, please. State your name and address for the record. Hello, my name is Habert Minas Masi, and uh, my address is 639 West Broadway. Good morning, Mr. Krause. Good morning. How are you? Good, good. Um, okay, I'll just go over the uh, findings one by one. For the purpose to use will be consistent with the various elements and objectives of the general plan. Due to the fact that the use is not adding square footage and uh, we are going based off an existing CUP, we're just upgrading to a full liquor license, the general plan will remain. And uh, we're not really modifying it in any way. So it will be consistent with the general plan. That the use and its uh, associated structures and facilities will not be detrimental to the public health or safety or the general welfare or the environment. Uh, as far as the safety goes, uh, there's a police report attached, and in the past calendar year, there have been no police reports, so that will remain uh, with the help of uh, the owner and security on and the police department. But as far as the general welfare and the public health or safety, just like uh, the work mentioned, will be having a the outdoor patio will be closed at 11 p.m. on, uh, recommended to be closed at 11 p.m. on weekdays and 12 a.m. on weekends. So, and there will be no music outside. That's one of, also one of the recommendations of the planner. That the use and the facilities will not adversely affect or conflict with adjacent uses. Um, There's a commercial office and there's a surface parking lot to the left and the right of the building and we will not be affecting it in any way because we're not, it's not necessary to add any more parking and we're not adding square footage so the traffic will not increase. So we won't be affecting their business because we're not even competing with them. Uh, and finally, that the adequate public and private facilities such as utilities, landscaping, parking spaces, and traffic circulation measures. Well, like I mentioned, because the, and also uh, the planner mentioned, because the rear patio is not covered, uh, we do not need additional parking. We're keeping all the parking as is. And uh, the rear patio will be open, subject to a wooden fence to not have the noise go over to the residential areas. All right. Um, well, I had a, a couple kind of quick questions. Um, first of all, you, have you taken a look at all the conditions, and are you okay with those conditions that are being recommended? Yes, I have taken a look at the conditions. Okay, I, you know, I, I took a look at the plans, and it looks like there's like some tandem parking at the rear of the building. So this covered patio or uncovered patio, excuse me, would 
take away a portion of those tandem parking spaces. Now, you're not using those to satisfy any kind of parking requirement or anything else currently, right? No. Okay, so the three, so there still will be the spaces there which still, still exist. The three it spaces. just wouldn't have the, the tandem associated. That's with correct. It. Okay. Do you know about how many seats there will be on the patio area? Uh, forty-two, I think is. Forty-one or forty-two, I believe. Uh, now, in terms of the uh, the the city smoking ordinance, how do you guys intend on complying with that? Are you going to have a no smoking in the patio area, or how's that going to work? Uh, we will either have uh, no smoking in the patio area, or we'll try to work with the city on it. Okay. To see what we. So can you do. guys think that you can comply with the, the yes, smoking of ordinance? Yes, Okay. I think that's a few questions that I did have. Now, in terms of whether or not, whether or not we do restrict the patio area to a lesser time to be more compliant with the noise ordinance, let's if we restrict it to 10 p.m., is that going to be tough for you guys to be able to do that? Is that something you guys would be amenable to? Or I think the main concern would be the time restrictions on the weekends mm -hmm. because 10 p.m. on the weekdays from 11 shouldn't be that much of a concern, but at 12 a.m. It's more the weekends that you would want to have the extended hours? Were, yes. And you feel like you can comply with the city's noise ordinance having... Yeah, because there is also a, one of the conditions is that we are not allowed to have music outside. Okay. That's correct. I'm sorry. Not just music, but speaker system in general. Because we were afraid that they may have speaker system where they call an order is ready to make that call, such and such. Or even that, we were trying to restrict. So no speakers, period, yeah. on the outside. Okay, I think that's all the questions I had for the applicant. I do have one for staff, and that's in terms of the, the CUP required, let, let's say they were just going to do just an outdoor patio area and not have, extend the alcohol. They wouldn't need any CUP or anything for the patio area, correct? If, if that was the case and no expansion of alcohol sale was going to take place and they didn't want to upgrade from beer and wine to full liquor, which is what is also being proposed, that's correct. So they could put in a patio today without a CUP that just wouldn't be able to That's alcohol. correct. If they want to stay with beer and wine and they're not going to sell alcohol. But it, oh, it is going to be hard to enforce, of course. Oh, yeah, yeah. Okay, great. Thank you. Um, I, uh, that's all I have at this point. I, I do have one speaker card. That's, I that's, filled that up. That, that's yours? Okay. Yes. All right, so um, at this point, I'm, if there's, I see no other cards, did you have anything else you'd like to add at this point? No, as long as I answered all your questions, okay, that's all. Great. All right, well, I'll go ahead and take this case under submission so that officially closes the hearing on this case. Thank, Thank you. you. Okay, our third case on the agenda is uh, also for a CUP. This is for lot width. It's located at uh, 1376 Balmoral Drive. It's conditional use permit case number PCUP 2011-16. The applicant is Fred and Teresa Lamb. The property owners are Fred and Teresa Lamb. The case planner is Vilia Zemetitis, and the project description is an application for a condition use permit to demolish the existing house and construct a new two-story, 4,387-square-foot single-family residence on an R1R uh, res uh, single-family residential zone, flight, floor area district 3. Uh, zone lot is having less than the required 80-foot minimum lot width as measured from 15 feet from the property line. A subject lot has a lot width of approximately 79 feet. It's located at uh, 1376 Balmore Drive, described as lot 22 and portions of lot 23 of tract 34013. I have a staff report, please. The plans are located directly behind you, and we also have a pictorial aerial image on the screen to your right. As you just stated, this is a case for a conditional use permit to rebuild an existing single family home on a lot with a lot width of less than 80 feet. Uh, zoning code requires a conditional use permit be approved before a house can be reconstructed, again, on a lot less than 80 feet. This particular lot, um, as measured but according to our zoning code requirements, 15 feet from the front set property line is approximately 79 feet. Uh, the lot itself is somewhat trapezoidal in shape, and so it, it actually widens out as you go towards the rear of the property, so it's actually wider in general than 80 feet, except as required by the zoning code to measure 15 feet from the pro property line, it's only 79 feet, which is one foot short shy of the required 80 foot width. Um, the particular property in question, as you'll notice on in the aerial image, is surrounded by single-family residential homes. It is located in the R1 
R zone floor area district three. This is a subdivision that was created in the late 70s. All of the lots on the south side of Balmoral Drive are less than 80 feet in width, and so this would be consistent with the subdivision approval. Um, all of them feature a single family residential home, so this particular project would be consistent with the surrounding development pattern, and it is also in compliance with the zoning code requirements for R1R standards, as well as the land use designation by our general plan for very low density residential development. Um, this particular CUP, again, the project would not be detrimental to the pu public health safety, general welfare of the environment. A residential use is consistent with all of our required general plans and zoning standards and is consistent also with the adjacent development patterns. Uh, the single family residents would not adversely affect or conflict with adjacent uses. It's been shown that the home in question, which was constructed in 1981, um, has not been detrimental or adversely affect, or has it adversely affected the adjacent uses. It's been occupied since that time, so approximately for 30 years, used as a home since then, and has um, there have been no complaints, again, or any type of adverse impacts to the surrounding community. Um, the public and private utilities are in place and will be available, obviously, for the proposed development of the new home. The proposed home is approximately 4,000, as mentioned, 4,380 square feet. It will have an attached three-car garage, so it provides the required parking standards. There will be improvements made to the rear of the property, uh, a bit of cut and fill, less than 40 cubic yards. This would be primarily for the outdoor patio and the pool area. The house will be required to go through the design review board process. There is already an application uh, that has been submitted. That would be design review board case PDR 2011-014A. Um, the house has been designed to address the hillside design guidelines. It actually steps away from, it's actually tiered up, so the second floor is set back from all sides off the first floor, so there is a tiering pattern. Uh, the house itself has been designed in the neo-historic revival style with Spanish colonial revival influences. The surrounding neighborhood is essentially an eclectic mix of Mediterranean, um, Spanish Revival, English Tudor homes, so the particular property would be compatible with the surrounding developments and their architectural style. That concludes staff's brief presentation. Um, staff recommends approval of this conditional use permit to allow for the development of a new home and the demolition of the existing one. There were two staff recommended conditions of approval. One, that the staging and equipment storage area be provided on site throughout the entire site construction phase to minimize traffic impacts to Belmoral Drive. And two, that the project, um, again, shall require the review and approval of the design review board. That concludes staff's presentation. The architect is in the audience, Mr. Sacco Marcusi. Okay, thank you. Uh, may I have the applicant come forward, please? Good morning. My name is Sarko Marcusi. I'm a project architect. My address is 320 Arden Avenue, Suite 120 Glendale, 91203. Um, as Vilia explained um, the project, we are proposing to demolish the existing uh, single-family home. Uh, due, to, due to the fact that um, uh, that the house itself has been built in 1981 and uh, based on current energy standards and the codes, it really has a large uh, thermal footprint and it's just not efficient enough and it's a, it's a burden on our uh, energy policy. That's, so we really want to vastly improve by putting the new, uh, a new building. Um, uh, on the, the proposed building obviously will uh, be built according to the new uh, um, California Green uh, Building Code standards. 
uh, which will use uh, uh, a lot of uh, recycled products for the construction. Uh, we'll have energy efficient uh, uh, mechanical electrical systems. Um, the, the demolition uh, product would be uh, separated uh, either on site or at a location approved by the city where they do the separations and recycled uh, entirely. Uh, the reason we're before you for the CUP is that the fact that this lots were sub subdivided before the 1993 hillside ordinance, which uh, restricted uh, the lot width uh, less than 80 feet to require the CUP. So we sort of inherited that. We, uh, uh, that's the reason why we're here to get the conditional use permit. I have uh, reviewed the conditions uh, uh, of approval and uh, we in general agree with all the required. These are mostly standard conditions that we'll abide by. Um, uh, one thing I'd like to mention is that uh, we are proposing a two-story home and I have a handout uh, here that is the, the parcels uh, which shows along our side of the pro, uh, of the street, almost 80% uh, of the homes are two stories, and across from uh, our proposed project uh, that would be on the north side of Balmoral, all the homes are two story. So we're not an oddity building a two story home there. Uh, it's just uh, going to be similar to most of the two story homes that are there in terms of number of stories. Um, other than that, I'm not. If you have any questions, I'll be able to answer questions. But basically, I, I do have a, a couple of questions. In, in terms of the building pad itself, are you guys be able to construct the majority of the building within the existing building pad, or are you going to have to do a substantial amount of grading? No, actually, at the at the footprint of the building, there's been no grading. It'd be the entire building would be on the same pad. The only grading that we have is. Uh, the south side of our property is somewhat sloped, and we're creating uh, terrace patios, and that will require some excavation of some footings, and uh, so that's primarily that's the cubic yardage that we create is mainly coming out of the, the footings. Okay. That part of that would be backfilled in the areas where, where we have walls. So uh, I'm assuming that uh, Maybe two or three uh, truckloads at the most would be what would be go going out of this place, you know, in terms of dirt that might come out. Okay. Not even that. R other than the construction debris, right? Uh, other than the new yeah, construction yeah. debris, yes. Hey, uh, and uh, in terms of the uh, square footage, uh, how, how much uh, differences are between the existing and the new? The existing is 2,790, let's say almost 2,800, and the proposed is uh, uh, 4,300. So uh, about close to 1,600 square feet. I don't have the exact figures. Yeah, yeah that, that's, that's sufficient, yeah. I think. Mm -hmm. um, so, so in terms of you did mention that you're okay with the majority of the conditions. Yes. I'm just curious as to how you can satisfy the on-site construction, like the equipment. Can you, do you, will you have room to stage everything on site? Well, uh, we will not have, in terms of equipment, uh, we will not have heavy machinery like uh, dozers or, or or backhoes of that sort. It, primarily everything maybe would be like a bobcat that does some digging. But in terms of the actual materials and everything else, like the wood materials and everything else? You can, you oh, in terms of materials, the, the demolition that is being done, uh, I'm not sure. Uh, uh, this For the staging, we have a front setback, which uh, uh, at the location of the garage is about 18 feet and and where our residential part is is about 20 21 feet uh, that we that could provide us uh, temporary storage of the construction materials such as lumber uh, uh, or you know tile so you don't really intend on using the street for any kind of you know. well I think the only time that we might use the street or most likely would be where we have uh, uh, trash containers like 20 yarders that might be taking uh, one or two parking spots along the uh, side of the our side of the street. Uh, other than that, all the uh, construction material would be stored on site. Okay. Yes. 
Uh, at this, I don't have any questions at this point. I do have a few speaker cards. Sure. If you are you done with? Yes, I'm okay. done. Yes, thank you. Um, Ken Yi, you can please state your name and address for the record, please. My name is Ken Yi. My address is 1382 Balmoral Drive, Glendale, and I'm the owner next to him on the west side. If you look at the, uh, the pictorial, my house is to the right. That's a That's single there. family residence? Is that one story? No, it's a two story Sorry, residence. Okay. Couple of things I wanted to address. Morning, Mr. Krause. Good morning. Uh, wanting to address is that mine is a two-story house. His is a one-story. Uh, wanted to correct the gentleman earlier who said that all houses on on Balmoral Street are two stories. But if you look at the pictorial, to the house on my right, that's also a one-story house. I just want to. And, and I don't know further down the street, but some of them are also one story down there. But uh, what I would like to do is this. There are a couple of issues. You mentioned earlier about the demolition of the house. Uh, as a neighbor, I wanted to know what kind of a plan I have. I have not heard. I do not know what the city requires. And uh, of course, we'd like to know about the mitigation of the noise and the dust and the debris. And secondly, it's the length of the demolition and the length of building of this house that he's going to have. Velia mentioned earlier that uh, because of the setback 15 feet, it's 79 feet across. I think I went through that process for our uh, house also mm -hmm. when we were trying to do that. And we were not giving a conditional because... Uh, we had to scale back on the size of the home. And I'm, I'm, I'm hoping that you would also look into that uh, prerequisite for me. I'm looking at... Uh, and the second point I'd like to bring out is this. Because when we built the home, we took into consideration on the... Uh, I think uh, our home was built about 12, 13 years now. No, no, it's in 1992. I, I correct that. <laughs> I'm sorry. Uh, when we built, I remember the, the, the council here also t took a suggestion, which we also uh, implement into the building. On the windows facing west, the wall facing west on our two-story houses, on the second floor, they told us to mitigate by not having too many uh, windows or doors, which we didn't, which we complied, and also we only have a I think a opening, and it was for the bathroom. And I'm asking for the applicant, Mr. Lam, to please consider that also, since uh, he's he, I'm sure, being the neighbor, he's going to obstruct some of the views, which I also brought, and I didn't know if it's going to be applicable, but okay. do not know if it could be submitted. Uh, you, you, if it's going to be you can submit those, yes. Actually, yeah, okay. please. To you? Are you, are you uh, wrap, wrapping up here quick? Cause you're, yeah, yeah. You're it'll, okay. it'll, be, it'll be time. Okay, because your time's up, so yeah, yeah. if you can yes, just yes. wrap and it up. And that's all I'm trying to say is that, yes, we can work on that. And okay, great. Look into all right, great. Thank, Thank you very you. much. Okay. Uh, let's see here. Our next speaker is Dr. K. Hourly. Good morning, Mr. Krause. Good morning, how are you? Um, good, 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 thank you. I am the owner of the residence that's exactly opposite, 1375 Balmoral, or across the top of the hill there, if you look. That's a, is that the corner lot right there? The, the top one. Uh, what would that be, north? Yeah, I guess I so, am. Yeah. No. There's the, where the two houses are located, you're talking about two top houses. Okay. Mine is the red roof one. Red Got it. Roof. Okay. This one, correct? Yeah, you can put the, uh, there. You go. Before we start, can I got this legal description? Lot 22 and portion of lot 23. Can someone show me where lot 23 is? 
I tried to figure that one out, and I'm totally lost. Actually, and forgive me because I don't want to run into your time, but this there was a lot line adjustment that was done, and so there is a slight sliver. Lot 23 is directly below it. Okay. So, um, according, you know, if you take a look at the case files, there's actually yeah. a lot line adjustment recorded, and the map is shown in there where there is a slight portion of it of the adjacent lot to the south. I got you. If you look at the maps, that's I'm going to correct that. That's lot 13 that you're talking about, by the way, down there. Lot 23 is your property, by the way. Oh, forget I want you to know that. <laughs> Supposedly they got a piece of your land. <laughs> okay, here we go. Um, we bought the house in 2001 when I moved down from up north, my wife and I and my beautiful son here, with the whole purpose of a beautiful view. I have pictures, but I'll give them to you at the end because I want to use. I don't want to use up my time yet. I want to make sure we maximize it. The whole purpose of me buying a house when I come home from a long day's work is to sit down in the patio and enjoy this beautiful view. It's like a Christmas tree lit up at night. We've been enjoying it for quite a while, and we were told at the time that the person living across you has no, no uh, possible way of building a two-story house. Why? Because supposedly there is height restrictions. I don't know if that's correct or not. I don't have the deed to the house. So that's something I would like to look into. That's number one. Number two, by allowing uh, Mr. Lamb to move ahead with this, it's obviously going to not only be a disturbance, to adjacent neighborhood, adjacent homes. It's going to affect us in multiple ways as a nuisance, like it was mentioned, the noise, the dirt, the odor. Uh, being a physician, my family both suffers from severe asthma and allergies, so we're going to suffer for quite a while, or they are, and I will too. Uh, the other thing is the value of my home is going to devaluate tremendously. And I don't think this is fair for the city to allow something like this, but I would allow him to go ahead with certain conditions. We are willing to work with them. We would love for Mr. Lamb to improve his property, but there are other options available, such as building deeper. Since he bought the land down below, he can go a little deeper, straight ahead, and therefore that will allow us to enjoy our view, and he will continue to enjoy his view that he currently has. Instead of obstructing one neighbor's view and enjoying it all alone, I would like for him to consider that. Are, are you about done? I'm about okay, that. Okay, great. In, in conclusion, uh, what I would like to say, I think it's only fair that all the neighborhood be, as citizens, be happy with what's going on. If someone is unhappy, it's going to affect and be a disturbance for all of us. So this is what I'd like to say. But can I give you some pictures before? Absolutely, yeah. This is something I'd yeah. like. Please, Ms. Billion. Yes. Thank you. Thank you very much. You're welcome, sir. Thank you for telling me about time. I would have kept going. Oh. <laughs> be here all day then, right? I'll be here all day. I have uh, one last card. That's uh, Hu Yun Kim. Good morning. I'm Hyun Kim. I live in 1370 Sunshine Drive. I'm the uh, neighbor to the doctor who just spoke. Okay. Uh, my issues are actually the, uh, pretty much the same, so I'm not, I don't want to take up too much time uh, uh, elaborating the same issues. But uh, just to show my concern here is that the, I'm very happy that uh, Mr. Lam is uh, improving the area, and that would also improve the whole neighborhood. But the issue that I have is when I pur pur purchased the house, same thing as uh, just talked about, is um, assumption that I will have the view of the city. That's going to pretty much obscure. I, I, in fact, I just saw this morning they're putting up the post to show how much uh, view will be obscured. And I see that the, all, my down, all the downtown is gone from my, my uh, 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 view too. And um, I had an assumption, maybe, maybe I found them now, but the assumption that when I purchased that house, I bought the place in this 
hills and such, so that I have a good view. That view will be gone, and I'd like to know whether there is any way I could uh, uh, secure that. Um, one suggestion that I may be able to make, possibly, is uh, is there any way you could do a lower? I'm still improving the property, but uh, is there any way possible to not go up so high that we literally lose the whole view? Thank you. Okay, I did have one question. Yeah. I mean, you you talked about the the silhouette that's going up right now. Right. So there, this is currently it up. yeah, it's currently a one-story residence. Right. Would any so would any height above that existing one story would that block your view as well or is it? Oh, when I saw it, that two story is literally two. So the second before. you get to that silhouette where it starts at the, the top. The front of the one ridge. just went up just before yeah. we came here. The back one was going up uh, yesterday and today okay. this morning, but the front one went up and I mean that's nothing. Now, where, I only see the sky now. Where, where is your view located from? Is um, it from it's a north is it, corner. Of the two property, but is it like your? Is it a patio? Is it a bedroom? Is it a living room? Or I get some view from the patio. I get a full view from my master bedroom. Okay. And now totally gone. Alrighty. Okay. Thanks very Thank much. Thank you. You know, I, I wanted to ask that same question of, of, of Dr. Hourly in terms of the actual view location that you have. The view that Miss Villia uh, provide you with the pictures. Uh, not yet. Okay. Basically, I uh, the subject property subject property uh, mentioned there currently allows me basically a hundred percent view of downtown. The minute uh, the skeleton went up or the silhouette, uh -huh. like you mentioned, just imagining, uh, thinking with the, the the partitions going up, the walls going up, it would be totally gone. Okay. Now, is that what what room or this is from my family room and my patio? Okay. And from uh, my son's room upstairs, he'll have a partial view. Okay. Okay. But nothing from below. I usually like to sit outside and relax with a cigar okay. in my hand. Ah. <laughs> All right. Thanks very much. Um, I have one last card. That's uh, for Fred Lamb. My name is uh, Fred Lam. I live in Glendale since 1985 in Next Street, Trawalgar, and I moved to uh, Balmoral, the house I'm living now, more than 20 years. I see all the neighbors have two-story house. I only have one single story. I would like to enjoy two-story house like my neighbors. and. Uh, I, I listened to my neighbor talking about the view across the street. Uh, one thing I have to uh, uh, tell that their house is a much higher level, and my house is not going to distract their view at all. I mean, maybe small, but you look at them, their, their level is much higher, almost like a house higher than my house. And also, when I bought this house in uh, 1989, 22 years ago, I, uh, I heard my neighbor, the Mr. Yu, Mr. Kang Yu. He's going to build a house, and he also have the problem with the neighbor across the street. He, that is the house that doctor, his family, before the doctor, and I heard they have some uh, argument. They go to the court, they went to the court, and uh, Mr. Ken Yu uh, win, uh, win the case because in California there's no view right. And also their house across the street is much higher. And also uh, that uh, my, uh, my house uh, uh, is, uh, it got, you, you, we're gonna make it a new house to build in the neighborhood to bring the value up not bring the neighborhood uh, value down. And also, uh, we want to create some job, you know, some uh, improve our living quality for my family. And also, uh, you know, uh, uh, make the environment, you know, the landscape, everything improve. Because my house was a, was a track home built by Kalmbach uh, in the 70s. And the house has been um, is kind of not up there, 
So I'm trying to make the house like a, you know like a, a minimum uh, impact to the house. He, my 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 neighbor, Mr. Kang Yu, when he built a house, he also did the same thing. And I also in the neighbor, I also suffer a little bit, but I never make any complaint. I because I think we be a neighbor, we want harmony, we want everybody happy. And my house is nothing interfere with other other neighbor. You look at the there is, I when I bought the property, I talked to the to the the cow mark the de developer. There is only one house uh, next to Mr. Yu. They have a high instruction, so that's why they build a parking subterranean. And the rest of the house, when I bought it, there's no high restriction. That's what I uh, I like to tell. Okay. Thank you. Good. Thank you. Um, I don't have any other speaker cards. At this point, I'm going to give the applicant uh, five minutes time for their rebuttal. Good morning, again, Mr. Kraus. Um, I'll be brief. You know, I guess primarily the the main complaint I hear from the neighbors is basically. I guess the view is the, the main issue. Now, as I mentioned, uh, a gentleman mentioned that I mentioned 100% of the homes are two-story. No, I said 80% of the homes along our side are two-story, and 100% across the street are two stories. Um, the fact that these two homes are sitting uh, above our pad by almost 20 feet, they already have an advantage of 20 feet higher than us. So. Um, uh, and, you know, they're dwelling on one lot that is a two single story right now. The rest of them across their homes, they're all two stories. And I don't think this house should be targeted for this purpose, that everyone has this little corridor of a view that they're losing right now. What about all the homes that, along Balmoral on the south side? They're all, uh, you know, two story homes, except for three of three homes, the rest of the homes along the south side of Balmoral, two stories. So, um, uh, um, in designing the home, I have been very careful to uh, to articulate all the facades as much as possible by stepping back the second story, create voids and um, and masses to uh, uh, to create in terms of uh, time of the day shadows and um, and uh, and voids to uh, uh, reduce uh, the appearance of, of the mass of the house as much as possible. In addition to that, obviously, the landscaping that we're proposing would be uh, a substantial benefit to to the overall appearance of the house and then for the neighborhood for the fact. Um, and. Um, <clears throat> I guess that's that's it. I don't have. I really don't have any other uh, okay. issues, if, unless if you have questions specific to the project that I can answer. I, I, had, I did have one particular question. Yeah. I'm looking at the center of the structure. And right. It's got kind of that taller yes. element in the middle. Mm -hmm. What is what is the purpose of that particular portion of the? Uh, you know the. Uh, I I have studied a lot of uh, the uh, Spanish uh, uh, revival, Mediterranean Spanish. Uh, the houses that were built uh, in several uh, regions of our country, and particularly this house, uh, I have modeled not the entire house, but part of it from a building, a house that I like very much that was built in 1908 in uh, Coral Gables, Florida. And I have a book that I could have brought, but it, it's a, uh, uh, it's a. Uh, it's a two-story, clear story element that brings light uh, and air into the. Oh, I'm sorry, light and air into the, to the the, the entry, uh, uh, atrium, uh, and it sort of emphasizes uh, the entry to the house. Okay. Yeah. Other than that, it's not it's not an occupied. The second, it's not an occupied story. It's it's a clear story okay. going all the way to the. Roof. You're not proposing any large tree species or anything like that? No, no, sure we're not. Uh, okay. We're not proposing any large trees. In fact, uh, we'd like to be as 
slim as possible in terms of uh, trees because of both for us and, and the neighbors alike, a view is something that everyone enjoys and will like to keep the mass of the planting as small as possible. And, and you know, one of the uh, speakers mentioned second story windows and that sort of thing towards the west. Is that uh, the uh, the second story windows uh, towards east and west that overlooks the neighbors? Uh, they are minimal. Uh, they are uh, they are uh, some that are high above five feet from our finished floor that are for uh, bathroom and shower areas. Okay. And then we have, in addition to that, on the second story we have. Uh, four slender windows uh, that are on the uh, uh, on the side these two on on the south and two on the left that are are on the headboard side of the bed in other words you know uh, so they're back so they're not a uh, primarily viewing they're just to bring those some are, light yeah, in those are all bedroom yes and and I I could live without windows but those walls would be too blank, you know. And yeah, yeah. yeah, so we need some relief on those walls. Are those required for building code in terms of... Uh, no, they're not, because I have access uh, to both of the bedrooms uh, from uh, balcony uh, and other windows. Yes. Well, that's all the questions that I have okay. at this point. Thank you. Um, so uh, at this time, I'm going to take this case under submission, and we'll be running my decision okay. in the coming weeks, and that... Uh, officially closes today's hearing. Thank you.